Hey guys, Frank Cox here. Uh, on today's video, I'm gonna show you how to light the Super 55 drum smoker. Stay tuned. All right guys, so in the last video, I showed you about the guts of the drum smoker, why it works as reliably as it does. And like, I'm, I'm serious, you can get up to 19 hours on a single basket of charcoal using lump or whatever you're using. Some charcoals will yield a longer burn, but for me, I'm not gonna cook 19 hours. That's just ridiculous. So uh, what I do like to do though, is save my charcoal for the next cook. And that's one real big benefit here is that you're not gonna consume 15 pounds of charcoal in the average cook. So um, anyway, let's get right on into it. So I've already got the charcoal basket loaded with lump here. As I showed you in the last video, there's an air gap under this. So a lot of people will throw like a little haystack or something like that and light from the bottom. And I just want to tell you, I do not recommend that. You will have better results if you do it the way that I'm showing you in this video. So what I do instead is I top light this charcoal basket. So I fill it about three quarters of the way up with lump. And in this video, I'm using some of the good charcoal. It's called the good charcoal. Um, I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. I just happen to have a couple bags left over from a previous cook. And uh, it's really good stuff. I'm pretty impressed with it. It's, it's actually like, you can tell it's like legit wood. It's not just a bunch of just whatever's laying around at the, pal at the charcoal making place. And um, it, you know, I tend to get more consistent burn with this because it's not big, huge chunks mixed in with fine, uh, like fines and stuff like that. So I prefer to use this lump here. Now B&B &B is also really good. You're gonna get a, bit, a broader size mix in your in your bag if you buy B&B, &B, like the brown bag, that's what I prefer. Um, they also have like some mesquite and hickory uh, blends out there that are pretty good. Um, but for me, I just prefer good old fashioned oak lump charcoal when I'm doing this. So I fill it three quarters of the way full, and then I take a little bit more and I put it in one of these charcoal chimneys, and that's just the standard you know, it used to be $14, I think it's close to 19 now. Just a regular Weber charcoal chimney, it's the big sized one. And I uh, fill it about three quarters of the way full as well. Now, one thing I like to do is use a burner like this. So this is just a fish fryer burner. I've got a little grate that I had plasma cut out years ago um, that I set on top of that. And I just got a propane bottle here. So I'm gonna get that lit real quick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna light that chimney from the bottom and it's, we're gonna let it go until the top of the chimney turns like a salt and pepper color, is what we're gonna do. So I've got the burner lit. That's gonna take us probably about 10 minutes. So we're gonna let that let time elapse and get that done. Once it's salt and pepper colored on top, then I'll show you what I do next. Okay guys, so this charcoal is starting to get what I call salt and pepper colored on top. See if you can see that a little bit. You can see it's got good core in it that's lit. So what I'm gonna do now, what I typically do is put this basket inside the drum and uh, then I'll, I'll show you how I dump it. So I'm gonna use my Freedom gloves here. This is from my buddy Al Infante at Magna Chef. Got these cool magnets that holds everything together. Um, we're getting ready to uh, do a special with these gloves where you can buy a drum smoker and get a free pair. But I recommend you check them out on his website, magnachef.com. These gloves are great because as I dump this chimney in there, it's gonna spin up. You can see flames coming up off of this charcoal. I don't get myself burned when I'm using this. So anyway, I'm gonna take this down here and I'm gonna make sure I don't hit a bolt in the drum and I'm gonna spin this out and dump it on top of that charcoal basket. Like that, see how it doesn't come up on my arm. Then you can use the chimney to kind of even out that charcoal. So now we're fully lit. And the next step is I'm gonna put this baffle plate in there. You wanna do that pretty quick. Now, if you can see that in here, there's a gap around the outsides of this plate. It's about a quarter of an inch. Just kind of even the plate up to where that gap is even all the way around. And we don't have to get in a hurry now. This, this thing's closed up. 
the only air that can come through that charcoal basket is what's coming out of these holes, these little slots, and what the is tuned on that plate. Everything else is uh, blocked, so it can't get around it. So anyway, we're going to put the cooking grate in here and let this drum come up to temp. Now we just close the lid and I'm gonna reset the camera. So we got our smokestack all the way open. Um, I don't recommend closing this smokestack down. There's no reason to, unless you need to drop temperature. Now for our air inlets, these air inlets are sized a lot bigger than a tube. The tubes are, are an inch and a half usually, or right at inch and three quarters in diameter. And so one of these intakes is the same square inches as two of those tubes. So for you hot and fast guys, there is no cap on how hot you can get this drum. It's just as hot as you want. But for you low and slow guys, you're never going to use both inlets. I highly recommend you never open both. Try to run the drum with one. The only reason we include two in the package is because like everybody likes two things. That's just kind of how it is. So um, when you assemble your drum, You'll want to make sure you put silicone around this and you'll see that on some of our build instruction videos but this is about lighting the drum so what i'm going to do my wind is coming from behind me here so you can do one of two things you can open the inlet up that's facing the direction of that the wind's coming from or you can open up the intake that's coming like downwind facing downwind like if the wind's blowing that way we would open this one if we want to go downwind it doesn't really matter what I do recommend though is pick pick one, work with it, see how it works. If you don't like it, then do it the other way. Um, you're gonna use your pinky as the measurement tool here again. Just open one intake up and you should be able to stick your pinky in there. If you can put your pinky inside that little hole right there, that's plenty open. You don't need it more open than that. Now we're just gonna let this drum come up and it should lock in about 300 degrees. That's where I wanna cook today. So we'll be right back while it warms up. So one thing real quick I'm gonna point out is that as your drum is heating up, you've got that lit charcoal up on top of the barrel of the charcoal basket and it's lighting itself downward like a fuse. So the charcoal that we just, that was already in the basket that we just dumped the lit charcoal on top of is still cold. So what happens is, is, is that charcoal is lit on top of that basket. It's gonna to start to heat the charcoal below it. You'll get some white smoke when you first start your drum, but it should clear up or get thin blue over so much time after it heats up all the charcoal below it and starts to burn down like a fuse. Now, what's really important is that if you put wood in the, in the basket, you wanna minimize the size of that wood. If the wood is too big, like I always say broomstick size, if the wood is bigger than that, then it's gonna take a lot more heat to get that wood preheated so you'll have that white smoke and the smoldering action a lot longer than if you just if you put a vertical piece of wood in there. Um, some guys will throw a chunk in. Another thing I hear all the time, and I don't like chunks, I like that broomstick size, it's about nine inches long, and stick it vertically in the basket so it lights and lasts throughout the entire cook as it burns down. So a lot of guys tell me that they really wanna have a door on the front of their cooker so they can add wood during the cook. You, I completely disagree with the need to do that. Um, you're never gonna have to add fuel to a Super 55 because it will run 19 hours. If you're gonna cook longer than 19 hours, you might as well just refuel and start over because there's gonna be ash at the bottom of that ash of the basket. So if you had to add fuel, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to clean out the ash somehow anyway. So you could just relight and go for it again. Um, these things come up to temp super, super fast. So you don't really even have to worry about recovery time if you had to relight. But um, the main thing is, is that if you throw big chunks of wood in during the cook, you're never gonna get rid of that white smoke and the smoldering, sooty, bad smoke flavor. Um, I like my, my wood to be below that lit charcoal when it starts. That way the when the wood's heating up and starts to smolder, it'll go through the top of the lit coals that are on top of the basket. So anyway, we're gonna let this thing finish coming up to temp. We're already almost to 250 here, so we're just gonna let it roll and we'll be right back. All right guys, welcome back. We're uh, sitting here looking at our thermometer here and it's what I like to call needles up. Um, so I like to cook on a drum smoker around 300. That's my favorite temperature. Some of the competition guys like them to be hotter than that. And uh, you know, backyard. some of the backyard guys like it to be a lower temperature. Here's a couple scenarios that you can do to control those temperatures. If you want to cook, let's talk about the hot end, like 325 plus. All we need to do on that is open our 
uh, the tabs in our baffle plate just a little bit more. I'm not talking much, just a little bit, right? To a, this where I've got it set with one pinky stops that climb once it gets to 300 degrees. So open those tabs up just a little bit. And then that one area, and remember I said we're pinky open. So that's only about 30% open. So we've still got two thirds of the movement of this uh, damper blade that we can open still. So if we wanted to get up hotter than that, then we could just open that blade up a little bit also. Um, now, on the other hand, if we wanted to cook low and slow, like 225, 240, something like that, I'm gonna run this smokestack about half open. That's, that's number one. Number two, I'm gonna close that to be less than a pinky open. Um, if you need to go even lower than that, then you start closing off your baffle plate. Um, but for the most part, one pinky in the baffle plate, one pinky in the air inlet, and the smokestack open, that's my favorite zone. Um, our thermometers do have 300 degrees straight up and down. And you'll notice I don't like bend over and look at the temperature. I set that that way right out the gate. And you can simply just rotate your dial one way or the other to get the temperature that you want to be straight up and down. That's my favorite way to cook. So if you want to cook 225, just rotate it. 225 is needle up. Now we're good to go. Wait for this wind. Okay, there we go. So now what I want to show you is what we talked about earlier, how this thing will hold its temperature right where we put it. So I wanted to drop the camera down so you can see the needles up. So I'm just going to open this lid, right? We're just going to let it sit here for a minute. And you might see this needle go down a little bit uh, as, as you sit there for a little bit. Let's just say you sat here for a couple of minutes or whatever. It's climbed down about 10 degrees, something like that. Normally what would happen is that you would get that crash in temperature and then when you close the lid, it's gonna spike up over the next five minutes or so. So we're gonna let a little bit of time elapse here and then I'm gonna go ahead and close that lid. All right, guys, we're back. Um, we've let this thing open long enough that our thermometer needle is down to about 225 right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the lid and we're gonna watch it for a little bit here, see what it does. My smokestack, I had my smokestack closed there when my lid was open. So I went ahead and opened it up just so to keep everything straight. Now, I will tell you this, when I bolt my smokestack on, I like the pivot nut back towards the hinge. And the reason for that is, is that if I open the lid and close the lid, I wanna make sure that my damper doesn't close as I open the lid. And then I forget to open it when I close, when I close it. So we got really nice, clean blue smoke happening right now. And you're gonna see this needle, it'll start coming back up, but it'll lock back in at 300. We're just gonna let some time elapse and watch it do it. You know, while we're waiting on that right there, I wanted to talk real quick about the, the decals. So I get a lot of questions about, you know, what the temperature rating of the sticker is or whatever. Now we were cooking at 300 and my hand is sitting right there on the barrel. So it's not hotter than probably, you know, 225, something like that, because we got that heat shield, we got the baffle plate and all of that. Um, these are just normal decals. I don't go buy really expensive, high temperature rated decals and stickers. They don't, they don't bubble up or nothing. You can just put stickers on there, no big deal. Um, you know, if you think about like some of the stick burner guys, they really like that patina and stuff like that. Well, that's cool on here too. If in fact you wound up getting too hot one day, cooking at 400 degrees or something like that, then, uh, you know, get a little burn spot on there. Who cares? It looks cool. But as long as you keep your temperature down below 300 or at 300, below 325, you're never going to have any issues with your decals. This, this actual material is what they use to wrap cars with, so it's just normal decals, but it is laminated, which protects the ink and the color and stuff like that. You know, one more thing while we're watching this needle climb. Um, Another question I get frequently is about the paint itself. Like what kind of paint do we recommend? The black one over there is actually a high temperature black paint. Um, it is rated at 1200 degrees under certain 
curing conditions and stuff like that. We don't have an oven, so we can't bake it the way it says on the can, but it does cure out to a really high temperature rating, probably closer to eight or 900 degrees. Now, this paint is just regular Rust-Oleum, the quart can off the shelf at Menards. Like, it's not special paint. This paint's typically just an industrial, uh, what they call direct to metal. So we don't have to put primer on or anything like that. It's self etching. So you can put that paint literally right on a clean steel surface that's been sanded with a DA sander and that paint will stick just fine and lays down great. Um, but it doesn't have to be like a high temperature rated paint as long as you're cooking less than 350. I've actually ran this drum at 400 and not had any, there's no discoloration at all. Um, but I usually recommend a lower temperature just for the safety factor. 350, 325 or lower, you're never going to have trouble. The only time you'd have trouble is if you left the lid open with the baffle plate out. Some guys like to pull the baffle plate out for a few minutes while they're setting sauce or something like that to get a deeper smoke on that, uh, on their chicken or what ribs or whatever. And uh, if you do that and you leave the lid open, then you will turn this into a rocket stove. Um, that's, that's the benefit of having the baffle plate in there is it prevents all that. So this is just regular old paint. Anyway, we're right at about 290 almost. Just kind of sitting here hanging. Um, that didn't take long <laughs> to get back up. I didn't cut the video, didn't stop it. It's just like a run on sentence. I may have sped it up or whatever, but um, on, the, on the edit, but I didn't like cut it, you know. Um, it did not spike up. Normally by now, if this did not have the flow tuner baffle in it, we would have been up around 350 and we'd be trying to push it back down is what we'd be trying to do. I would have probably had to close my smokestack uh, for a little while in an effort to drop that oxygen getting to the uh, charcoal basket so that it would start to cool off a little bit. We haven't had to do that. I'm going to let this thing just sit here and run for a minute and uh, see if it goes over 300. While we're doing that, I'm going to show you these gloves. We're still sitting here cruising, just letting this thing see if it's going to go over 300. Um, these are my Freedom Barbecue gloves I got from my buddy Al, uh, Al Infante down at uh, Magna Chef. And uh, these are some really cool gloves. Magna Chef, he's got this magnet system that he puts on his gloves that's really cool. And what that does is it lets you, like, when your hands are in these gloves, it lets you clip that magnet together and you can push you can push one glove off with the other one, get a free hand, then you can pull the other glove off. It's really nice how that works. But these gloves here, they have a liner in them. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the liner is. Hang on, my battery's getting low. Um, not exactly sure what this liner is, but um, I know one thing. When I have my hands inside this glove and I'm picking up charcoal, lit charcoal, it doesn't burn my hands. I can lit that chimney, I can do stuff. It's got a nice long gauntlet on it, so it's not gonna burn my forearm. Um, when I lift the charcoal basket out because one of the things that we have to do especially if you're cooking at a contest or something like that is you got to be able to pull the charcoal basket out carry it over wherever the coal dumpster is and dump it in that in that uh, ash bin these things will protect your hands the whole way when I was at the Royal I dumped we had five drums running I dumped all five charcoal baskets in there and I had to walk a good distance and I didn't couldn't even tell it was on matter of fact I lifted the handle with one hand bottom of the ash pan was my hand right on the bottom of that as I dumped it I had to reach in the dumpster to just kind of like move stuff around and get my basket out that kind of thing no it didn't burn me at all these are great gloves we're going to have these on the website here pretty soon um, I've got 19 pairs as of right now today but I'll keep them in stock after that we're going to do a couple of giveaways with these we're going to do uh, some bogos buy a drum get a pair of gloves you know for free that kind of thing anyway so stay tuned on smokerplans.net that's where you're going to see that activity so we're still sitting here right at 300 it hasn't went over 300 um like i say normally what would happen if you did not have the flow tuner baffle in your drum if you opened up that lid and you sauced chicken or whatever you were going to do and you close that lid then that needle would have went up to 350, no problem. If you don't believe me, try it on your drum at home. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're still sitting here at 300. We did not go over, and that's what's really important about this design. Um, it's really, really reactive. 
uh, how fast this thing will change temperature if you want it to drop temp or raise temp. It, it's really easy how, how fast it goes. So anyway, guys, I hope that helps you. Uh, this is probably a longer than normal video. So if you don't mind, like and subscribe the channel uh, on YouTube there or whatever platform you're watching this on. If you're on the website, uh, dig around a little bit, look at some of the other products on here. If you have any ideas, hit me in the chat if you have something you'd like to see us do or if you need help finding a specific product. Anyway, until next time, keep your smoke thin and blue, um, and uh, you know we'll see you on the flip side.